Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and today we're going to go over compositing with passes. If you ever wondered why other people's renders look so much crispier and shinier and nicer without getting too exposed or underexposed or all that, a lot of it has to do with post compositing with passes. Kind of get that little extra mile from your renders. I'm going to show you two different methods, one in After Effects, one in Photoshop. And even though I already went over how I deal with passes and other tutorials, I'm going to dive in more thoroughly and deeply into my process here. Follow me on Instagram at Ojang, comment, subscribe, let's go. So I have this simple scene here with some diamonds, so 2048 max samples, 12 specular depth, everything else kind of normal, no highlight compression, exposure at 1, and denoiser is on. So let's go over the passes. Open the XR 32 bit for the regular beauty. I get the render buffer at float linear. And now I have EXR Octane for the format of the passes. And you can either export all the passes in one file as a multiple file, or you can export them as individual files. We're going to export them as one file. I have tone map linear, which if you're going to go into heavy compositing, you should go with linear tone map. Now in the beauty passes, there's all these different things that you can use or not use. Because I have diamonds in here, I'm, I'm going to check the refraction and I also always check the shadow. Now you can check other stuff. There's SSS. If you were using subsurface scattering, check that. And all the others, I barely use them. I always use shadows. Denoise Beauty always, Denoise Reflection Indirect, and let's also check Reflection Direct. Now, you have the lighting passes. I never export them. Um, let's see how the light pass looks. And in the Crypto Mat, I barely use it, but this allows you to mask object by their materials or by, by their object um, number, I guess. Now for the info passes, we got shading normals, we got object layer color and ambient occlusion. And also let's see the Z depth, see how it looks. I also set the max samples on 1000. So let's take a quick look. Now, this is the denoised, uh, since we have pretty high sample count, the denoised image is uh, it's going to be pretty similar to the beauty. Then we have the refraction. So as you can see, it only shows us the objects that are refracting. This is the shadow, only the shadows appear. This is the direct reflection and it shows the first ray that hits the, the objects and reflects. And the reflection indirect shows us all the rest of the bounces of the light that get reflected. I think that's how it works. Pretty sure. Now the light tag, this only shows us the light. So you see no reflection of the sky, no anything. I don't need that, so I'll uncheck that. This is the shading normals. Now shading normals paint each direction. And you can see we got the Y axis green, Z axis blue and red axis red. And that's how it gets painted on this image. However, something is wrong here. And that's because the direction works with the world axis. And right now my camera is rotated to the right at minus 90 degrees. So the whole scene is not aligned on the Z axis. It's aligned on the X axis. So to fix that, we're going to create a null, copy all these objects to the null, rotate the null plus 90 degrees, and then drag all the objects out. And now, as you can see, the normal map is fixed. We got the Y axis painted green, X axis painted red, and Z axis painted blue. Let's move on. For the Z map, if I play around with the Z depth max, you can see that the Z map holds more depth in it or less depth. That's pretty much uh, the depth information. Uh, it paints the, the furthest back part white and the closest part black. And you can invert it or not in post. I don't need it for now. We don't have any depth in this image. If you're using uh, landscapes or anything with depth, definitely um, you can use it. But I'm going to uncheck it for now. Now the object layer color basically lets us get a pass with objects that are painted in a full color. We have this red masks and for that we need to put an octane tag on the objects that we want. Go to the object layer tab and set a fully red color, either fully red, fully green or fully blue. And then you can easily separate them in post. That's kind of a quick way to export a layer mask. And you can actually do that in the crypto mats too. It's actually a pretty good way to do that. I'm used to this object layer uh, mode, but um. We'll go over both methods. Once you're done with the renderer, you drag it all to After Effects. Now to extract the passes and to extract the, the crypto mats, we need a special plugin. You might already have this plugin. If you don't, you can Google Pro EXR, go to this page and download it. You got it for Photoshop or After Effects for Premiere, or you can use EXR IO. You can use the regular one or the crypto mat included one if you're gonna use crypto mats. Both work fine, so you know make your own decision. Now, once I installed it, 
use the extractor on the, the pass layer. And here you can see all your passes. When you click on the layer, you can see all your passes. I'm going to select the denoise beauty and start with that. And we got to adjust our gamma to 2.2 since we are on linear mode. And also what I forgot to do is click on our beauty image, hit control alt G or command alt G. So you go to the interpret footage and go to the color management tag and check preserve RGB. And then we'll have the image as a linear image and not tone map. Of course, we got to correct the gamma to 2.2 and now we are good. Now, as you can see, there is very subtle noise in the back here in the beauty and in the denoise layer, that noise is gone. The problem is other tiny details are gone too. So for that, I'm going to mix the denoise layer with the beauty. And now you can see we're getting a little bit of roughness. That's good for us, but we're getting rid of the noise. So I'll put it at 75 and we're good for now. Let's uh, duplicate this image and select the shadow pass layer. And you can see we got the shadow pass here. Or you can um, set it and multiply, reduce the opacity and use that. What I like to do is set it at 100 opacity. Use an adjustment layer. And set the adjustment layer at a Luma inverted mat. Then I'm going to set curves on the adjustment layer. And now I can just uh, adjust with curves the bottom layers and make the shadows stronger. Let's duplicate the shadow layer and select reflection indirect, set the mode to screen. And now, as you can see, we got just the indirect reflections and that allows us to have a bit sharper and stronger reflections. Let's duplicate this one as well and select the reflection direct. And that gives us the direct reflections. And again, we can add more detail with this layer. You can see the reflection on the masks looks pretty good. Let's duplicate that, select the refraction layer. This way we can uh, make the diamonds brighter or if you got any glass or anything like that, set it to add mode and you can set the opacity really low. You can give it some glow so, so that only the diamonds kind of have a tiny glow. It's just a tiny touch. Let's duplicate that, select the shading normals. And now we want to get to a point where one side is painted white and the rest are painted black. That way we can uh, use that as a luma mat to control the colors of the bottom layer from that direction. And to do that, we need to change all the rest of the channels to the channel that we want. So for example, if we choose the red channel, I'm going to go to the green channel and select the red channel. I'm going to go to the blue channel, select the red channel. And now the red channel is white. I can invert the direction by inverting the black and white point, then play with the exposure to get the look that I want. And we can do the same thing with the green channel and with the blue channel. Well, we're going to select the red channel for this one and set the levels and really kind of crush the white. So I get a little rim, just a rim. I'm adding an adjustment layer, set it to Luma matte. And now with the curves, I can just increase the brightness. And that adds a little more kind of like a rim light detail. Now we're going to duplicate that, select ambient occlusion, set it to multiply. And as you can see, we can kind of squeeze out a bit more detail from, from the crevices and get all that tiny, tiny detail out there. And again, I'll put it at 100%, set in an adjustment layer, and use that as an inverted luma mat to uh, darken those areas. I'm going to duplicate that and then select the object color. And we have it all red, and we'll do the same as the shading normals. I'm going to turn all the channels to red, and now the red turned into white. Now I can use that as a luma mat or a luma inverted mat if I want to control the wall, if I want to change the colors. Yeah, I can pretty much. Do whatever I want here. I'm going to just make the walls a bit darker. Now we're going to duplicate that. We're going to delete those effects and apply the crypto mat plugin we downloaded. Now, if I click on the layer, you can choose which layer of crypto mat you want. I only have one. And now, as you can see, it paints each material in a different color. And we can click on which mask we want to choose. If we click on the diamonds, all the diamonds turn white. If I choose matte only. Now I got all the diamonds in white. I can click shift and add more masks to the selection or click alt and take off some of the mask. So that's really handy. And if I, for example, use this, now I can, of course, adjust only this object with an adjustment layer set to Luma Matte. Now I'm going to select all these masks 
make them a bit darker. I'm going to drag that under the refraction and the reflections because I don't want to make them darker. I want to make the color darker and add the reflection and refraction over it. And that's kind of important. You can change the order of the layers and you'll get slightly different looks. If you want the, the shadow layer to be over the reflection layer, then the shadows are going to be stronger. In this case, I chose the shadow layer to be under everything and all the reflections and refractions to be added on top of it, as well as the shading normals. So I get these highlights and they're not masked by the shadow. So now I'm going to add kind of like an overall adjustment layer and just play with the contrast a little, just a tiny bit, because once we added all these passes, we don't really need to work a lot with the um, overall adjustment layer. Most of the work has been done using the passes. So once I increase the contrast, I'll reduce the saturation by a little bit. I'll add a sharpen effect. As you can see, it just kind of gets a bit more sharp details. Maybe it's a bit too much. We'll just add a vignette and we'll make it very subtle. I ended up making it way more subtle. And now I can just play around with it until I get the look that I want. So that's how you do it in After Effects. And of course, you can import a sequence of images for an animation and do the exact same thing. Now, you can also do the same thing in Photoshop. I usually don't, but it's totally possible if you don't work with animations. After you install the plugins, you drag the beauty and the passes to Photoshop. You copy the beauty and you go to the passes. Now you can see we got all the passes as layers. Let's paste the beauty under all of them. And as you can see, we got all the passes here, including the crypto mats. And the first thing we're going to do is turn it to 16 bit because for some reason working with 32 bit in Photoshop is weird. I'm having weird problems that I'm sure are solvable or I'm sure there's ways to work with them. For some reason, the color work with Photoshop in 32 bit is pretty unmanageable. So I'm just going to turn it into 16 bit and work from there. Now it's going to be the exact same process pretty much. The only difference is, for example, if I want to extract a channel like in the shading normals, I'm going to select that layer. I'm going to go to the channels tab and now I have each direction, each channel, red, green, and white in the channels, right? I could just control click the red channel, go back to my layers and use a curve adjustment layer with a selection, which is going to mask that adjustment layer, right? And I, I can alt click it and then just use our levels on the mask itself. So I can get that rim. And now I have the exact same outcome as in After Effects. And I'm going to use the same process. I'm going to drag the denoise beauty, turn down the opacity. I'm going to do the same thing with the shadows as I did with the shading normals. Refraction, reflections, set them a linear dodge, turn down the opacity. And I'm going to get all the crypto mats that I want and select them and use that as a mask on another adjustment layer. And now I can add an overall adjustment layer Then I'm going to copy it, flatten it so I can add a unsharp mask to kind of sharpen the details a little bit and maybe adjust the exposure a little bit until you get the look that you want. Add a little vignette and play with it however you want. Now I ran with this. Usually I take a bit more time to kind of dial in the look that I want, but at least you can get the general idea of how I approach working with passes and how much more it can add to an image without wasting time in cinema. So I can get close to the look that I want in cinema and then in post adjust the look according to what I need and just get more juice out of the render, which is pretty hard to get right out of cinema. So that's it. Follow me on Instagram at ochang. Comment, subscribe. Appreciate all the support. Hope you have a good day. Peace.